Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia and this is the video you've been waiting for. In this video, we're going to talk about real world winter time range on the 2020 Kia Soul. But I do need you to stay with me through the whole thing because I'm going to tell you up front how far it gets, but I want to tell you why and how. So if you're going to watch a whole video of mine, this is the video to watch. Okay, in the sum, first of all, let's talk about the car. 2020 Kia Soul. I own the 2020 Kia Soul. This one's not mine. If you're following me uh, here, you'll notice that my car is gray. This one's white. They're identical cars other than the color. This car is the premium. That means it's the lower range version. There is a high range version rated for 383 kilometers um, of rated range. And many of our customers get a lot more than that. I'm going to talk about my personal experience with this car and or my version of this car. And we're going to talk in rated range, real range, and how that works. Okay, here we go. This car is rated for 248 kilometers of rated range. We bought it in the summer and consistently got, I don't think, without fail, we got over 300 kilometers. 302, 308 was very common. We've seen as high as 322 of rated range in our car in the summer. In the winter, here's the number you're waiting for. We didn't drop below 200, 200 kilometers. There's a lot of factors that go into that. And that's why I'm asking you to just stay with me for a second here. Okay, a lot of things you need to know, first of all. Number one, the premium model does not have the heat pump that the, lux that the luxury model has, the limited, uh, the high-end version with the more range. That makes a little bit of a difference. Um, it, uh, that model can capture regenerative braking, heat, and other ways, and it can use that in the heater. This car, if you use the heat, you're using electric heat. So. How do we get to 200 kilometers? What am I actually talking about? Am I talking about the number of the dash or what I actually drive? Because there's a difference between those in some cases. We're gonna head inside the car. It's gonna get a little boring as I show you some of the factors in the dash, and then we're gonna finish outside the car where I need you to stay with me right to the end because I'm gonna clarify a few more things. Here we go. Okay, a little boring view, or for those of you that are watching me uh, too much, maybe a better view. Here we go. When I talk about real world range, I'm not talking about this number. This number is a predicted range. So you can see this car is at 58%. The heat is off right now. It's rated to go 158 kilometers. This is a rated range, not a real world range. It's very, very good. I've actually been able to rely on this very, very well um, for all season driving. But this is not the number we're talking about. This is not real world. Because if I leave here, drive straight uphill at 130 kilometers an hour and in the slush, I'm going to get nowhere near that. So let's see what we're talking about here. When I uh, click this, um, you can see 58%. Actually, let's go back there for just one second. What I'm gonna do now is turn the heat on. Heat set to 25 degrees. And you can see it dropped right down to 131. I'm gonna turn the heat down to, to let's call it 18 degrees Celsius. We're all talking Celsius in kilometers here. You can convert to miles, I'll help you a little bit later. Um, right now it's one degree Celsius outside, so call it 33 Fahrenheit. But if I turn it down to 18 degrees, I go 142. If I turn it up to 25 degrees, I go 131. So I'm gonna put it at, let's call it 20 degrees, 21 degrees, that's fine. And now I'm gonna go to the driver only mode. The driver only mode is advertised to save you range. How much is it gonna save us? Two kilometers, 139 to 137. So a lot of things in this thing, driver only mode is great. It's not the huge success story that's gonna save you all the range you need. What saves you range? Turning off the heat. When I talk about the 200 kilometers, I'm talking heat on highway driving. The reason highway driving is important because in a gas car, highway driving is the most efficient. In an electric car, not so much. When you start going a little too fast, you get a little more wind resistance. And I'm talking driving it like a regular car. Even in the Canadian winter, I've stayed over 200 kilometers. Um, and again, this is my personal experience. Yours could vary and it could vary significantly. The other thing that, need, that you need to know is I'm driving in eco mode. If I change the drive mode right now, now I'm in normal mode, you can see it changes. And now I'm in sport mode. So eco mode 158, normal mode 155, uh, sport mode 150. Eco mode matters. Now it may matter more or less depending on what you see there. The other thing that matters is if you really wanna drive for range and you have to be on the highway, stick close to 100 kilometers an hour, 62, 62 miles an hour. Uh, that's our speed limit here uh, in greater Toronto area in, the, in uh, Ontario. Stick closer to the speed limit, less wind resistance, you're gonna hit pretty close to these range numbers. When you start going 120 kilometers an hour, not that I would ever do that, but when you go 120 kilometers an hour, you're going to lose range. If you drive through slush, if you haven't cleared your snow off, if you're carrying too much weight in your car, those are all gonna affect range and you could see less range than I've seen. Um, you could also certainly see more range. 
A lot of time this number is rated for 240, 230 uh, as a rated range, but as soon as I turn the heat on or actually get in the car and actually start driving, it's predicting differently. Now, this car has 179 total kilometers on the odometer. So when it's predicting range, um, it doesn't have a lot of driving history to predict that off of. But that is what I'm talking about in real world range. This car right now, if it was full, would be 274 kilometers of rated range. So that's in the winter, one degree Celsius, rated for 274 kilometers. Um, and that range doesn't change when I turn the heat on or off, but the actual, so you can see here, with climate off, 158, 137 with the climate on. Rated range, I would assume, would be a, uh, an a uh, climate off number and in good conditions and I don't think I would get 274 driving highway speed. The other thing you need to know is I put winter tires on my car. This car comes with eco-friendly all-season tires. They're not the best in the winter but they are pretty good for efficiency. Um, winter tires affect my range and again I still stayed above 200 all winter long. So let's finish up outside. I'm going to recap some important pieces. Stay with me. All right, real quick recap. Car's rated for 248. I stayed above 200 all winter long in the Canadian winter. It's snowing and cold right now, and I say all winter because it's March. Yesterday I was on my motorcycle, so winter is basically over here. Um, I did it with winter tires on. I did that driving at highway speeds with the heat on. Normal, everyday driving. Could you eke out more? Yes. Could you get worse? Absolutely. This is only my personal experience. Driver only mode on the climate system. That is not going to save you if you are flat out of range. It's going to add a couple kilometers, one, two, three kilometers. It's not going to be a be all end all. In other words, if you're driving and making sure you're making your passenger freeze without the heat because you're just trying to save range with driver only mode, freeze together. Turn that thing way, way down if you really need to save range. But as a real world car for 200 kilometers with heat on the highway, with winter tires, this car can do it and it does do it for me. Uh, big thing is you're going to ask me, how long does a long range one go? Similar statistics, even though this one uses, um, I used this car as an example and we didn't do a long term test on the other cars because it's going to be worse on this car because it has no ability to capture the heat created by regenerative braking and use that in the cabin. This car does not have that feature. That being said, still getting that 200 kilometer mark. Again, you might get more or less. So if you're buying a car, what are the variables? Now for us, this was our secondary car. So we didn't have to worry about a ton of range. What we find is we drive this car 95% of the time as our family car. Even when we have to go longer distances, we charge it on a charging station if we have to, we'll quick charge. Uh, we just uh, charge at Ikea for free on a stage three charger. The local Ikea has uh, that available to us. So that got us home one day when we knew we wouldn't have enough range. Range is something you pay for up front by a bigger battery pack. Now in Kia's lineup, you get luxury uh, features like a sunroof, uh, ventilated seats, heated or uh, ventilated seats and leather seats and those kinds of things. But range is something you pay for up front. If you can get by with a little bit less range and you're just comfortable stopping at a charge station, those stage three chargers are gonna get you through. We stopped at Ikea for like, we could have stopped for 15 minutes on the stage three charger. And I think in about 20 or 25 minutes, we had close to hundred kilometers of extra range when we were down to 6%. Final thing. What happens when you run out of charge? Big thing. Okay, so I've driven the car down to 2%. Probably shouldn't do that. Uh, eventually, when, with my car, around that 22, 25 kilometers left range, you get a warning in the dash. That's what you want to see. Hey, your battery's going low. You should really find a charge station. That's a good number to have, 20, 25 kilometers. Uh, today's world, there are usually charging stations around on the major highways and that kind of thing. That's helpful. What happens when you go too far? When you go too far and you go down to that, I don't know exactly what the mileage that turns on, I'd have to look that up. But when you go to, for instance, 2%, you're going to be driving with a little turtle in your dash and the power will be cut in this car significantly. It cuts down and says you're in reduced power mode. Uh, you can feel it in the gas pedal, it just really dulls the power down. That's at the final few percentage points. Um, so when that happens, you know you're very, very near the end. Don't do that. I've done it twice, uh, both times for you to research. I uh, could have charged it, but I left it uh, to run low. Um, that means you need to find a charge station immediately uh, or park the car with some range and figure out what you're going to do. But the car is very drivable in all conditions at all legal speeds and a slightly beyond and you can reliably get plenty of range. If you're looking at an EV, do you lose range in the winter? Yes. Is that a huge factor for you? If you need more than 200 kilometers on the low range sole, get the higher range sole. For my family, no factor at all, no problem at all. 300 in the summer, 200 in the winter, 
that's the number of range for my family and real world experience. Let me know in the comments below any other questions you have about range, about these EVs. Um, don't trash me if it's not for you. We still sell a whole bunch of gas cars, that's fine. I'm a huge proponent of gas cars and electric cars. I like them both. Um, but some people say, oh, that's not enough range for me. That's okay, get a gas car. If it is enough range for you, welcome to the world of EVs. Thanks everybody for watching.